Welcome to E3. The Christian life is a transformation from inside out. And you cannot consistently live differently from the transformation that happened inside and say you are a Christian. Jesus was very clear. He said, by their fruits, you shall know them. By their fruits, you shall know them. By their manners, you shall know them. By the quality of their living, you shall know them. He was very clear on that. He was very clear on that. It's not by works that you are saved. You are not saved by works. You are not saved by works. That you are doing good is not what secures your salvation. But good is the fruit of your salvation. Hallelujah. You, ju you just keep naming them. In the invertebrate family, from there you get to the vertebrate family. You have the birds, you have the fishes, you have the reptiles, you have the amphibians, you have the mammals. Then you keep going, you keep going, you see the graduation. Then you get to the humans. After the humans, you get to the angels. The angels are part of our existence. They are part of our system, but the Bible says he made them a little lower than angels. That means that we are a little lower than angels. Angels are in a little higher realm. That's why we can't see them, not because they don't exist. You can't see angels the way you cannot see Amoeba. But you believe in Amoeba. When you have Jingivalis corruption or in your tooth, tooth decay caused by Jingivalis, and Amoeba Jingivalis, you will know that Amoeba exists. Hope I'm not going crazy. <laughs> now, that is living organisms. So we don't see angels because they are a bit higher than us. <coughs> In the quality of livingness, there is graduation. Now, in the Amoebae, the lowest form of living organism, the lowest character traits of our humanity is called the works of the flesh. That is the basis of our human qualities. The lowest of our human quality. The most degraded part of our humanity. That character trait is called the works of the flesh. It says against such the works of the spirit, there's no law. In the animal kingdom, there is no law. Right? And what are the manifestations? Adultery. If an animal takes another animal's wife, has he sinned? He has not sinned. There is no law. There is no law. You see that in the animal kingdom. You see two lions. This is what the lion, you, I'm sure many of you have read stories about how lions perpetrate themselves. A particular male lion will invade the colony of another male. He will either kill the male or drive the male away and take all his wife. And take all his wife. Has he seen by doing that? Look at it. Fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred. These are the lowest character qualities of the human person. These are the animalistic elements in our human nature. And when you get born again, you are elevated to a higher life. And in that higher life, there are qualities that are manifested. That's why they are called the fruit of the spirit. They are the qualities of the highest realm of our humanity. The highest quality. The saintly highest quality of our humanity. And those are the things shown in verse 22. Look at them. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness. So when you get born again, you are now born of the Spirit. You are transformed from fleshly life to spirit life. The qualities of that life, the character of that life, the manifestations of that life, the operations of that life is in joy, is in peace, is in love, is in gentleness, is in goodness, is in faith, is in meekness. And what? guess what? When you are born again, the innest, the cravings for these things is 
embittered in your heart. The cravings. Have you ever met a very religious Christian that is very wicked? How many of you have met one? I have. Very religious. One threatened me one time that, <laughs> ah, yeah, 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 yeah. By the time he kneeled down and prayed for me, fire of God. If I'm a Christian, for goodness sake, we are all the same father. But he said, by the time he's true with me, you will see wickedness in oppression. Praise God. Have you seen such people? Very religious. For some of the women, they will tie their hair. They are prayer warriors. But you see the tangible, if you are looking for wickedness, look not more. Look, when you see them, don't look for them. Don't look for them. It's, it's, it's hope that is seen. That's wickedness that is seen. When they speak, you know that, man, God. And they will shroud every of their words in religious language. They will shroud every of their words in religious language. They will cover. Everything looks religious and righteous. But it's wickedness typified. No value for human life. No value for human life. If you like, die. Their one area will not come out. They, have, they are suspecting that, uh, you know, they believe that there are stealing of destiny. So when they give you money, perhaps you will take their... They have all manner of twisted religious interpretation to everyday living. Everyday living. Praise God. High ethics, high ethical standards and moral life is the hallmark of Christianity. Praise God. Matthew 5, 16. Let your light so shine before men. They will see your good works. Acts 9, 36. Can you show me there? Acts 9, 36. Now there was a Joppa, certain disciple named Tabitha, interpreted as daughter. This woman was full of good works. And Anne's did, which she did. What happened? And it came to pass in those days that she was sick and died. And whom, the point is that I'm not, I'm not going to go into that story, but she was full of good works and Anne's did. She was full of good works and arms deed. She was a believer. She was a believer. 2 Corinthians 9.8. 2 Corinthians 9.8, Colossians 1.10. Quickly, quickly, in very quick succession. And God is able to make our grace abound towards you, that you always having enough in all things. May abound unto every good works. God has called us to good works. And good works there speaks of moral rectitude and ethical conduct. Issues that borders on honesty, truth, fairness, equity, justice, goodness, kindness, moral discipline. Praise God. Colossians 1.10 that ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto our pleasing, being fruitful in every good, being fruitful in every good, and increasing in knowledge of God. Being fruitful in every good work. Being fruitful in every good work. 2 Timothy 2.21. 2 Timothy 2.21, Titus 2.14. If a man therefore purge himself from those bad things, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and meet for the master's use, prepared unto every good work. Titus 2.14, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. Good works there, I don't know, we read all the scripture. Good works there is not talking about prayers, speaking in tongues. It's not even speaking about healing the sick, working of miracles, No. It's not talking about the manifestation of, it's, it's the, that's the gift of the Spirit. Praise God. The gift of the Spirit is for you to make profit, is to be a blessing, for you to be a blessing. It's for you, it's for your consumption. Eh? Praise God. Hallelujah. The gift of the Spirit is for your consumption. The fruit of the Spirit is for you to be a blessing to the, third, to the next person. Yes. So the gift of the Spirit is for you. 
the fruit of the Spirit is for the other person through you. I, I, am I communicating? You know, I've said this many, many times. The gift of the Spirit are not power operation gifts to make you a star. No, that's not what the gift of the Spirit is. The gift of the Spirit is the blessings you receive for being born again. It's not a power gift. The gift of healing is not a gift for you to go and heal the sick. No. The gift of healing is a gift that you receive to remain in health. Am I communicating? I think I've, 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 I think I've done the teaching on that before. The working of miracles is not for you to work miracle on the street. It's for you to experience miraculous hand. Things that happen to you will be a wonder even to you. You know that this is nothing but the finger of God. That's the working of miracles. Like I always say, if I say, let me give you a word of advice. I'm giving you a word of advice. Who owns it? When I give you, it becomes yours, right? So, the word of wisdom that you have received, it's an operation in wisdom, which is only typical of someone who has the spirit of Christ dwelling in him. It's the blessing you receive. You know, I've been trying to tell with people, I realize that wisdom is not common. Praise God. Wisdom is not common. There are many confu- uh, tight conditions you find yourself, and you act, and it becomes supernatural. It's like, ah, how? This is nothing but the hand of God. It's not a power gift. The power is operated in you. Eh? You know, it's operated in... The power is operated in you. You are a supernatural. See, it is the gift of the Spirit manifest in the believer that makes him a wonder, that makes him a supernatural being. It's not for you to become a state star. It's not. And I have had so many amazing things like that. So the gift of the Spirit is for you. The working of miracles. That you can never be stranded. You find yourself in a strange land. Before you know it, the help you are looking for comes your way. You can never be stranded. The Archbishop shared the testimony of how he was traveling to Auchi and his car broke down. And in Benin, there was only one engineer in Leventis that could fix that car. He was close to Auchi. All of a sudden, the engineer was driving by. And guess what? He had all the tools he needed to fix the car in his boot. And they asked the engineer, what happened? He said, I don't know what happened. No. I just became restless and I decided to just drive and maybe let me drive to my village. Do you know the workings of the gifts of the Spirit? It's not to make you... See, you are first a wonder to yourself yes. by the operations of the gift. So it is the fruit is for you to be a blessing to a fellow human being. For you to be a blessing to your fellow human being. Praise God. You know, people tell me that I don't like prayers. And I tell them, look, the kind of things that prayers has done for me, that's careless one minute of prayers. One minute. One minute of prayers. The kind of money it has given me, those who love prayers more than me, they don't have those kind of testimonies. So when you are telling me that I don't like prayer, be careful. Because the evidence are bound. Amen? Fruit of the Spirit. It's for you to be a blessing to the fellow human being. It is the oppression. It is the earnest is born in your heart. So there's a craving. You are zealous for good works. So you can't say, oh, I have an understanding of grace. Oh, grace is not a licentious. It's not a license for gross indiscipline and lack of moral compass. That's not what grace is about. That's not what grace is about. That's not what grace is about. So, for those of you who are misunderstanding of the gospel that we preach, who says that, oh, well, you know, the grace of God, we are under grace, so I can do whatever I like. You are, you, are, you are not, you cannot. He that is born of God cannot make a practice of sin. You cannot comfortably dwell there. It's not possible. It's not possible. And I tell you, if you begin to do the wrong things, the f- works of the flesh, if you begin to do them without a scruple in your heart, something has gone wrong. 
He said, my spirit will no longer be in contention with them. So he gave them up to a reprobate heart. So if you can sleep with someone who is not your wife, as anything on sketch that you see is a subject of your bed, if you can live in a morally decadent life without a scruple in your heart, look, I'm a Christian. This is not right. I shouldn't do this. Something has gone wrong. It's either, by biblical standard, it's either you were never born again, because he that is born again cannot continually make a, pra- make a practice of those things. It's either that's the life of Jesus is not bettered in your heart. You agree with them. You know, you can be here and not be born again. Do you know that? You can agree with them. I don't have objection on that, Sabi. And yet, the light of the gospel is not bettered in your heart. Being born again is a strong thing, though. Now, strong thing. The Archbishop told us the story of how they went for baptism of some born again believer. And a man who was just there said, Either they baptized, okay, let me join, let me join. He just ran and joined. And as they were baptizing him, the cigarette that he was smoking flew out of his pocket. Then he said, Yeah, he's not born again. And he told them, He said, Look, that was before I came here. <laughs> and guess what? And true to it, that man became a pastor in CGM. He said, That was before I came here. Before I came here, I was a smoker, I was a bad guy. But I have encountered the Jesus you are talking about. So as I came inside the water and came out, it's a new man. The cigarette, that's why the cigarette flowed out. That's all the nyama nyama flow out of the water. And you know that man turned out, he ended up being a pastor in CGM. He never went back. The life of Christ is a life of the strictest of moral discipline. Hallelujah. So much time spent. Uh, I like to read the scriptures. Titus 3, 1 and 8. Titus 3, 1. Put them in mind to be subject to principalities and powers, to obey magistrates, to be ready to every good works. Verse 8. This is a faithful saying, and these things I will that thou affirm constantly, that they which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable unto men. They which have believed. Have you believed? Have you believed? So you must be careful to maintain good works. You must be careful to maintain good works. For it's profitable unto men. Go on. The next verse. Romans 13, 3. Hebrews 13, 21. 1 Peter 2, verse 12. Romans 13, 3. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to evil. Without them, not be afraid of the power. Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. Rulers are not there to punish good. So should you not be afraid of the terror of the ruler? Do good. That means if you don't want to be afraid of the powers of rulers, just do good. Just do good. Think about it in Nigeria. With all the police misdemeanors, if your papers are complete, will you have anything to be afraid of police? It is the righteous that is as bold as a lion. The wicked runs when no man pursues. For you to enjoy the benefit, those, the privileges of those parts of scriptures, you must do what it says. You must do what it says. Be zealous of good works. Be zealous of good works. Be zealous of good works. When you are zealous of good works, you will be as bold as a lion. You will be as bold as a lion. You will be as bold as a lion. Hallelujah. I think the time is so fast. Now, I'll just give you the rest of scriptures. Go and read it. 1 Peter 2, 12. Hebrews 13, 21. James 3, verse 13. 2 Peter 1, 3 and 5. Praise God. Some of the contemporary usage of the word character and fruit of the spirit, moral uprightness, integrity, principle, being principled, probity, honesty, trustworthiness, truthfulness, good character, fairness, equity, justice, and honor. The challenge we have many times, we equate good works with religiosity and piety and then condemn it. Piety tends to focus on the outward appearance, and that was the predominant focus of the religious people, the Jewish people of Jesus' days. Praise God. The religious focused more on the outward things, on those things, to make them look saintly, an appearance of being righteous, you know, sanctimony and all that, so they look righteous from an outward point, whereas they are decayed from an inward point. But what Jesus is saying is a deep-seated 
transformation in your heart that makes you zealous towards good works, good things, qualities of moral integrity, qualities of good character, qualities of ethics, qualities of discipline. If you say you are indisciplined, it is inconsistent with the values of the Christian faith. The number one element of our Christian transformation is high moral discipline and very high ethical standards. We all have weaknesses. It's not overnight. You have to learn it so that by reason of use, the day you get born again, your heart is sensitized towards good. So you start saying, no, this thing I'm doing is not right. Let me do it better. Oh, it is not good. Oh, that's, you know, in those days, people that had girlfriends, what is girlfriend? Girlfriend is sex partner. Forget all these stupid, uh, stupid, uh, nicely, you know, we package it in a nice way. What's your, your girlfriend, are you getting married? No. What is it? A sex partner. What's girlfriend? Girlfriend or boyfriend? Sex partner. If you have a girlfriend here and you are not married and you have no plan for marriage, I can almost bet you, I can almost bet you that that person is your sex partner. You know, in those days when you get born again, you say, ah, my girlfriend, I'm born again now. While I come, can't day. Abi, is that not the Christianity we are? You must have good moral. I know that because of our weakness as humans, it's a challenge. So what do you do? You learn it. You learn it. Ah, I have to say the truth all the time. Ah, I lied yesterday. See, it has nothing to do with your righteousness. You learn it. I have to speak the truth. Ah, I lied. I won't lie again. Next tomorrow you may, but you, you, you are learning it. That's what John was saying, that if we do sin, we have an advocate with the Father. That means that if you err, don't kill yourself over it. There is someone that has pleaded your case. Your case is settled, but you need to leave that air in. So you have an advocate with the Father. So you must learn it. You must learn it. Instead of you to remain in that relationship that's heading nowhere, and you guys are sex partners, get married. Get married. As far as if you guys have agreed to be together, just get married. What's, what is delaying you? In this church, we know how to do weddings with 10,000 naira. Uh, uh, yes, now. It's 10,000. We'll just go to registry, register it to, so that the world will know. Then we'll come in my office. We'll join you together. If your father and your mother has agreed, we'll join you together. If you want to go and meet your father and your mother, you don't need to do canopy. In their room, you pay bride price. In Benin, it's even cheap. It's only if you are from Imo State, you'll be worried a little, but <laughs> in Benin, it's 24 naira. 24 naira, you can pay. You don't need your father to even help you pay that one. You just say, just say take who? Praise God. God expects us to walk in that direction.